the center started in uh, officially in 2008 because my husband and I both were very in love, you know, we fell in love of, the, of Costa Rica, mostly of the Caribbean South, this, this corner of paradise, and we decided to protect the wildlife uh, of here. When we came here, we saw like, you know, how the neighbors and the people of the community is the poorest area in all Costa Rica, and it's no culture about the animals. They thought that all the animals are or for kill or for eat or or they are dangerous or they are toxic or they are horrible. Means that try to change that was, uh, I think, the most important for us. And we start because um, everybody knew about our um, jobs in Europe, and and people start to to brought us animals, so snakes, because was the um, the job of Sandro's Sandro's jobs, and then mammals. That was my background in in Europe. You know, I has been working. I was working in a zoo, in uh, in Barcelona Zoo, and and. And well, just people and even authorities, when they found an animal, they, they, they brought to us. And finally, one day I say, well, we have a rescue center in home. It was like, what's the necessity here in, in, in the Caribbean? The idea to release, I think, started in my mind uh, a lot of years ago when I was working in a zoo. Because I always thought, why primates, that they are very, very intelligent animals, they are they are not animals in the sense like when we talk about animals. They are other other persons or other kind of, of people or I don't know how to how to tell them. But I I just start to to thought like why people keep the animals in an enclosure, mostly primates forever. Probably is something else that we can do for them. And it was my dream. My dream, like, uh, you know, say to everybody that it's possible to, to release the animals, to release primates, even if they were pets for a long time, or even if uh, uh, they were orphan babies, very tiny, because a lot of people, a lot of scientific people don't believe that that is possible. We were able to release 99% of howlers. That works very simple. You know, in the sense that we take the monkeys each morning at 8 in the morning with our volunteers, all of them, and just we carry in our shoulders using their tails, that is the, the stronger part of, our, of their bodies. And we walk for almost a kilometer far to the center and we release them each single day, all day long till three in the afternoon. They are free in the trees, playing, and in the afternoon just they, we call them, and if they wanna come back, they come back, and if they wanna stay in the trees, of course, we cannot go up to the trees and, and take them. And that is start when they are ready for go to the forest. That means when you have an orphan baby very tiny, of course, it needs the mom 24 hours a day. But then, step by step, they want to explore around you and start to be ready for go to the forest with the rest of our, our, our group. The first days go with, with me or with the nurse that he or she is used to be, just for a few hours. It's like go with babies to the kinder, you know, like in the beginning just two hours, just for play, and then step by step. They want to go more and more to the school. Is that they enjoy the school, enjoy the trees, enjoy the rest of the group. They play with the other ones, and step by step, go up to the trees, more up to the trees. The rest of the group encourage the babies to go up to the trees. They help the babies. We have two females that they are really, really good doing that. You know, helping the babies and teach the babies how to go up to the trees, how to jump. And, and that happens for at least two years each, each day. And when they are teenagers, of course, they change, they discover the sex, they discover the wild ones that 
they have curiosity for our monkeys and one day they they prefer to follow the wild you know <laughs> and and just they they leave the mummy like human teenagers this is, this is a normal process like in nature 